The following content is provided under a Creative Commons license. Your support will help MIT OpenCourseWare continue to offer high-quality educational resources for free. To make a donation or view additional materials from hundreds of MIT courses, visit MIT OpenCourseWare at ocw.mit.edu. Now we're ready to take a close look at a laser and see how it ticks and why it ticks. We've picked on a helium neon laser because a helium neon laser is a very simple one and also it's one of the first lasers. In fact, uh, the first laser was the ruby laser and helium neon was, uh, was right after it. So it was the second uh, laser action that, uh, that, that was observed. Also, the red light from a helium neon laser is familiar to almost every one of you. Uh, especially when you go to the uh, supermarket and see it at the, uh, at the checkout counter. Usually a helium neon laser, a red helium neon laser is used. So let me start by showing you what a helium neon laser looks like. Here is a uh, helium neon laser, at least a helium neon laser. They're all uh, different. Uh, now, what I would like you to see here is that uh, it's made up of a, a discharge tube, which is this, which is the, the amplifier that is necessary for laser action. And then the discharge tube is terminated by, by two mirrors. Here's a mirror on, on this side. You can see it. Here's one mirror, and, and here, is, here is the other mirror. Okay? So it's a, it's a small, this is a small laser, and, and the mirrors are sealed right onto, onto the discharge tube. Now let's see this laser uh, in action. And we have it already set up for you over here. And then all I have to do is to uh, turn the power supply on and count to five, and the laser will come on, and here it is. Laser's on. You can see here is the, the glow in the, in the discharge and you see a, a, a pink streak, and that's where the light goes backwards and forwards and gets amplified. And, and here is uh, the output mirror. Uh, the other mirror is, uh, is sealed, and the output from the mirror here then goes onto, uh, onto, onto the screen. And that's, that's it. You, uh, as long as we power the discharge and have enough gain to overcome the losses, and we choose the mirror transmission appropriately, the, uh, you'll get laser action. Now, with this kind of a laser, it's very difficult to, uh, to adjust anything and to play with it. So what I'm going to do, just so that you can see uh, a little bit more uh, of uh, how a laser works, I'm going to go on and, uh, and, and have a laser that, that the mirrors in which the mirrors are external to the, to the two. Now, in order to, to, have, to separate the mirrors out from the, from the amplifier, from the discharge tube in this case, we have to seal the, we have to seal, uh, the, the discharge tube. Now, here is, you can see here, if we take a close up at this, here is a, a sealed discharge tube. It doesn't have mirrors on it, but has windows. Let's, let me show it to you again. Here is here's the, here's the amplifier section, and here is the cathode, and the anode is, is, over, is over here. So the discharge then runs along uh, this line over here, okay, this capillary tube over here. Now let's focus at, at the ends. We don't have, as you can see, we don't have square mirrors. You can see the, 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 we don't have uh, windows, I should say, not mirrors, uh, because we're going to have the mirrors external to, to the discharge tube. But you can see that the windows are sealed, but they're not uh, square to the, to the tube. And uh, the angle, in fact, is called the Brewster angle because at that angle there is no uh, reflection from the glass surfaces for a certain polarization. So that's why one uses windows at a Brewster angle so that, uh, so that there is no 
uh, no reflection in the windows. And you can see both ends. Now if we take a look, look at the other end, over here, a close look at the other end, you see that, again, both windows are, are at, uh, at Brewster's angle. So here is, then, the, uh, the amplifier tube. And now we have a, another one, a similar one, that is placed, and I'll position it in the same way, that is placed uh, uh, over here, that held, held in place over here in this setup. And, uh, and the, there's wires running to, to run the discharge. So here is then the, the, uh, the amplifier tube inside, inside this laser. And let me again point to the mirrors now. Here is, here is one mirror, and here is the other mirror. And each mirror is held in a hefty mirror mount, and the adjustments are over here. We have two adjustments over here, and then we have similar adjustments over here. All right, so here is then the tube, the amplified tube. The windows are terminated with windows at Brewster's angle, and, and then we have the two mirrors. So now I'm going to turn the discharge on, and here it is. And let's see if the laser is lazing. All right, so if I put a card here, you see that indeed the laser is lazing. So what I'm doing here is reflecting it by this mirror here, then this mirror here, here's the laser beam, and again onto, onto the screen. So on the screen now, we have essentially two spots. So one is coming from the laser with the fixed mirrors, that's this one, and then the other one, the other spot is coming from the laser with the adjustable mirrors uh, here. So what I'm going to do is first block the laser with the fixed mirrors so that we don't have any confusion. And the only spot then is from the one from the laser with the adjustable mirrors. So now here we are. Here's the laser then, all opened up. And now I'm going to show you how touchy the alignment is. So now if you watch the intensity on the screen as I, as I slightly misalign, you can see the light is out already just by very small, very small misalignments. So here we are, it's at peak value, and then I go the other way, and it's gone. So the alignment has to be, has to be very, very stable. All right, now I can also adjust uh, the horizontal alignment, and again, show you how, how, uh, how touchy everything is. So here we are, here is then, uh, in a nutshell, here's the, here's the amplifier section. The longer it is, of course, the more gain we have. And, and the mirrors are placed, in this case, about 50 centimeters apart. One, uh, this one is a flat mirror, and this one is a spherical mirror. And, and the, uh, the alignment has to, be, has to be very stable because a small misalignment would, uh, would create a lot of loss. And then we just don't have enough gain in the amplifier to overcome these losses, and the laser quits. Now, later on, we're going to have other demonstrations that illustrate the properties of, uh, of the laser. So when we come back, then we're ready to show you uh, a variety of effects associated with, uh, with a laser.